safe and secure way of adding some good fitness to your routine. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining us again for another hopefully great video. Yeah, it's good to see you. And let, as always guys, let me know what have you been up to? What have you been doing in the last few weeks? How is your training going at the moment? Because yeah, over the last few weeks we've been through this odd phase and my DM inbox and my email inbox has been jam packed with people asking me about cycling. And specifically as all of us, or most of us are runners um, first and foremost, but how to go about adding some cycling into your routine, how to do about some indoor things on Zwift and Sufferfest and Trainer Road, and yeah, how to get going basically as a runner. So yeah, we're gonna break this video up into five sections. So we're just gonna talk about why and why we're gonna be doing this, what it's all good for, how we can go about it, um, some ways to add some strength and some endurance um, to help your running, uh, and how to go about doing some recovery work as well. And then finally, a little AOB, a lot of quick fire points. I've got about 20 odd little points. Um, yeah, so stay tuned to the end for that. Right, let's get this show on the road and how as runners, we can really benefit by adding some cycling into our routine. Let's go. Right guys, let's start with the why. So essentially cycling is a really good way to add some fitness to your running without the massive impact that running has on us when we're out um, on the roads or on the track or the trails. Essentially we're not putting our body under anywhere near the amount of load by doing roughly the similar amount of exercise. So it's a very good way of adding some fitness, adding some endurance, adding some cardio without tiring out our body. It's also a really good way to make us strong. A lot of strength work we can get through this by doing some fast sort of repeats and some hill work as well. Really good strength work in disguise. And also it's a really good way of improving our cadence as runners because cycling, a lot of the sort of main work that you're going to be doing is around about that 180 magical um, sort of strides a minute, steps a minute. And so yeah, it's very, very similar and it can get our used to our legs. For a lot of people, going a little bit faster, which can we replicate when we're running as well. And also it's really good fun. It provides a lot of variety with what we're doing. If you're online and cycling on Swift, it's a great community thing to be doing as well. And yeah, very, very safe and secure way of adding some good fitness to your routine. Right guys, moving on, so how are we gonna go about this? How are we gonna get our cycling set up? Well, this video is really focusing on indoor cycling. Um, so essentially, you've, you've kind of got three main ways you can go about this. You can go down to your local gym and use uh, one of their spin bikes, it's a really good sort of introduction, or one of their regular cycling trainers. Um, yeah, a lot of gyms, easy accessible, no big outlay you've got there, just paying your monthly payments. So it's possible to get going for a very small amount of money and you might well be paying to go to the gym anyway. The second option, which is probably the most common option for people at home, is to buy yourself what's called a turbo trainer, something that you can fix your regular bike to. So you do need a bike to start with, and then yeah, to buy a turbo trainer to go with it. Now turbo trainer, most for the, some of the cheaper ones on the market, you're talking probably around about 200 pounds, and you can spend a lot of money on these things up to around about 1200 pounds. And as I say, you essentially connect your bike to it, and then that turbo trainer, as long as it has some smart features, we can speak to an iPad or a phone or a computer and communicate uh, to the World Wide Web and use some software to help you with your cycling from there. So a couple of options I'd recommend. If you're looking for a smart, what's called a smart and interactive trainer, that's one thing that can change the resistance as you cycle and it can speak to um, your smart device as well. Then yeah, have a look at the Wahoo Kicker. As I say, these can cost north of about a thousand pounds. So you've really got to know you want to be doing this before spending that sort of money, but you get some really good tech in there as well. And also if you're just looking for a, what's called a smart trainer so that's something that can still speak to a device but you're going to have to control the resistance yourself 
then yeah, these can be around about sort of two to 300 pounds and look at the tax flow is what I recommend having like there. And the third option is what I use, which is uh, a Watt bike here. So it's a standalone trainer. And the advantage of things like this is there's very little, if any maintenance, and it's always ready to go. It's set up and you can use it. So myself, I'm not a mad keen cyclist, but I like to take the benefits that cycling can give me and use them for my training. So for this, I don't need a regular bike. I'm not gonna be doing any outdoor cycling, but this is set up 24 seven, ready to go. Now this is kind of the, probably the, one of the most expensive options. So I bought this actually secondhand for just over a thousand pounds. This is called a Watt Bike Atom. Um, and yeah, there's some other companies such as Peloton as well, that make some very top end bikes. So you're talking around about sort of 2000 pounds and you have to buy into their system as well. But yeah, you're getting a very high quality bit of kit for that but a big outlay. And as with all these things, you can try and find some second-hand options. So I've bought this off a guy on Facebook. Um, so you scare, scour eBay and Gumtree and places like that to see what sort of second-hand deals. And finally, what most people will be doing is then using an online platform. So you're gonna need an iPad, an iPhone, I keep saying iPhone, a tablet or a phone or a laptop or an Apple TV, um, something like that to look at while you're cycling. And yeah, your smart trainer can communicate that. So the main three cycling platforms are Zwift, Sufferfest and Trainer Road. Personally, I use Zwift because I really like the community aspect of it. And I can be cycling with friends and family and just loads of people from the online community around in a special world and yeah I'll do a bit more in-depth detail about Swift but that's what I like to use and they're the three options they all need a monthly subscription and I think you can all use them for free just to test them out so it's good to test all three out and see what you like the most. Okay, right so you've got your bike it's all set up what are we going to be doing on it? But all those three main platforms offer loads of workouts that can be really helpful for your running. I'm sure like a lot of people, Emily's short mix on Zwift is something you're doing quite regularly. So yeah, get stuck in. If you do subscribe, a lot of those workouts will be really good and they'll help you with your running. You can also just do the same workouts that you would do with your running. So if you're doing six by three minutes at that sort of high intensity pace of your zone four sort of effort, you can do that on a bike. It's absolutely fine. Crank up the resistance to what feels nice and get going. But if you don't have one of those platforms and you just want to be there cycling by yourself, here's three quick things that I'd recommend doing on your bike. So the first one is to try and replicate some hills. So you can do about 30, 30 seconds hard, getting up to around about that zone four effort in a big gear. So it's a little bit harder to press. Don't shift down, so up the resistance, get into a big gear and get out the saddle and get pedaling for about 30 seconds and about 60 seconds recovery, similar to how you'd be doing some of your hill reps. The second thing you can be doing is some pyramids. So after a nice long warm up, then about 30 seconds, 45 seconds, 60 seconds, two minutes, and then back down. So 60 seconds, 45 seconds, 30 seconds, with a 60 second recovery in between that. And again, up to around what it's gonna feel like that sort of 5K effort if you're doing your running, up to zone four, pedaling really hard, hard and yeah, standard session, standard sort of pyramid session there. And finally, a good endurance session we're doing. So working on that cardio um, around about, so a lot of people, if they're gonna be doing some, what we might call an easy run, on a bike that's got to be around about at least one to two hours of cycling so get comfortable before you go and yeah that's going to be in your zone two heart rate zone so around about 60 to 70 percent of your maximum heart rate and it's just a case of sitting there and pedaling away with something on your screen to watch but it just gets the body used to working for a long period of time which we might not always be able to do when we're out on our run right guys halfway through the video let me know are you a fan of cycling are you a runner that likes cycling do you are you a zwifter let me know your names and stuff down below in the comments and yeah we'll try and hook up on swift i'd love to get a big group ride going at some points so yeah let me know cycling big part of your world something you want to get into something you want to add in yeah let's connect down in the comments we always hang it down there after we upload every video. And moving on to recovery, a lot of runners use their bikes, me included, a lot of time for recovery. So I might be out doing my regular training during the day and then I'll come in, jump on the bike, 
for a nice recovery ride afterwards to help freshen the legs up, get a little bit of that lactic out the legs. So for me, that's gonna be around in my zone one heart rate. So 50 to 60% 50 of maximum heart rate and just pedaling for around about 30 minutes, super, super easy, a nice recovery way to really help aid your running to get back fresh for the next day. Right guys, so we're all set up and we're ready to go. We've got our workout tuned in. Well, there are some other things we need to think about before we can get going. So here's some quick fire stuff um, that I think is quite important as well. So the first thing, as I said, get your phone, get your iPad and get that ready to go. Get it fully charged because they don't half drain the battery. Get a power supply close to the bike. We're not too close to the bike because we're gonna be sweating a little bit. So get your tech ready to go. Also think about your Netflix for some long rides, having something like Netflix, iPlayer, uh, Amazon Prime, a subscription to one of these services will make your time on uh, your bike a lot, lot easier. Um, get set up with your nutrition before you start. I like to have a table right by my bike so I can put some nutrition on there and get to it easily. You don't have to burn through a lot of liquids when you're cycling away. So really important to get yourself a fan as well. When I first started, I didn't have one getting super sweaty, but a fan in front of the bike. Again, I'll put to the one I link down in the description below. So yeah, it's pretty inexpensive, around about 20 pounds. It's gonna make your life a lot more pleasant. Also, you're gonna be sweating quite a lot on quite a, what is quite expensive equipment. Covering it with some towels and things if you're expecting a big session will be really good. Sweat is very, very corrosive and it will look, you'll look after your gear a lot better if you're gonna stop that sweat getting on it in the first place. And also some clipping pedals. Again, not essential, but down the line, you might want to upgrade. If you don't have clipping pedals, it's far, far easier to cycle. And yeah, you shouldn't be falling off your bike here. So don't worry about being clipped in at traffic lights and things. Also really good to invest in a pair of padded shorts. Some of these saddles are not the most comfortable thing when you first start out. So some padded shorts and some cream inside them is going to make life a little bit more pleasant as well. And finally, these things aren't exactly the quietest. Of course, the more money you spend, you're probably going to get a bit of a quieter machine. Think about your neighbours. If you're in a block of flats, you don't want to be out doing this too early in the morning. So just think about your environment and people around you. And finally, another couple of other things, getting yourself a heart rate monitor like this, again, is going to be really good to tap into that sort of data. You need to make sure it has a Bluetooth connection as well, because most iPads and all of these bikes, they're going to connect via Bluetooth. And also finally, a mat on the floor is again really really essential to stop that sort of sweat getting into your carpet and onto your floors because yeah good session you are going to be dripping <laughs> believe me right guys so there you go that is my little introduction to cycling to help your running as i'm here pedaling away Kiki's on the sofa just there, and Sarah's in the kitchen making dinner. Yeah, thank you for following along today. Hope you found the video useful and got some tips, and yeah, let me know. We'll maybe meet up on Zwift and go out for a ride one day. And yeah, let me know what's happening in your world, and thanks for following along. Thank you for all the support with the hats. Super cool hat to get your cycling done and the Patreon supporters and people buying hoodies and wraps and all the stuff on the store. It just helps, the channel helps us create content so, so much. So yeah, thanks guys. I'm gonna finish up my little ride around London. And of course, we'll see you, yes you, getting it done, out there having fun in the next one. <laughs>